Senegal, a coastal country west of Africa. An annual 5.3% growth domestic product growth rate and a low inflation rate of 1.6% average. That's almost 197,000 square kilometers of investment opportunities waiting for the right type of investor. It is about a 15 million uh, person country, uh, one of the most stable countries in Africa. We were very fortunate, we've never had a political coup and our political stability has been one of our strongest foundations that has uh, allowed us to sustain um, economic growth over the last uh, four or five decades. Up until the, uh, the pandemic hit, we were at a steady six to 7% growth uh, rate for the GDP. Uh, that is due to a regime that is committed to uh, making the, uh, the proper reforms and also uh, taking the, uh, the right measures to make sure that the, the economy is stimulated enough in order to, uh, to get to that level of production. Senegal's most contributing sectors to its GDP are agriculture, trade and government services. Senegal has made significant progress in infrastructure, including the transport, electricity and water sectors. Faced with many challenges still, Senegal exports of goods and commercial services increased at an annual average rate of 6.4% and 5.5% to countries such as the USA, China, France, India and many more. Having bilateral investment treaties has doubled its foreign direct investment inflows from $168 million to $345 million, making Senegal ideal for foreign direct investments. We had a major success between uh, Timis Open Cosmos and Senegal, where we had uh, discovered uh, the larger gas fields on the Atlantic margin and one of the largest on the wall. And now BP is the operator. They're going to spend tens of billions by uh, having Senegal becoming one of the larger LNG producers over the next uh, few years. So uh, I was actually the architect. A uh, very large number of multinationals had those concessions for the last 25, 30 years. None of them have drilled, they all uh, laughed. They said that is not hydrocarbons there. It was uh, myself and Cosmos, which we jointly spend about 450 million, that we have proven everybody wrong. Now Senegal uh, it is in the top list globally, having uh, substantial, very, very large uh, reserves of uh, gas with multi-billion dollar uh, development by uh, one of the most prestigious international oil company, which is British Petroleum. Infrastructure is in place, uh, access to market is great, uh, and also Senegal being uh, uh, well positioned uh, vis a vis uh, many Western countries, and also the uh, market in the uh, ECOWAS um, area, but also even further in the, uh, the African Free Trade uh, Agreement uh, area, I think uh, gives uh, Senegal quite a, 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 a position for investors to come in and, and flourish, but also for that uh, uh, flourishing of those uh, investors to be useful to the people and uh, to the economy. We've been investing a lot in infrastructure. Um, the first pillar of the Emerging Senegal Plan is a structural transformation of the economy. We want to push more industrialization. We want to be transforming agriculture into agribusinesses. And we also want to digitalize and be a hub for investments for the entire region. Our geographical position will allow us to, uh, to export, to in invest where we can have uh, returns of investments because we are spreading it across uh, more people. And that's what makes Senegal such an attractive place to set up and do business there. Uh, outside of oil companies, have uh, historically invested, and we, since we found uh, 
significant amount of oil and uh, gas reserves. We also have, you know, services sectors, a lot of banks, and you know, and you have also auditing companies, PwC, EY. Uh, United States has been a strong partner for us. Uh, we're continuing to uh, develop that relationship uh, from a business perspective. A lot more investors from America uh, are, are looking at us, uh, setting up in Senegal. Uh, despite the language barriers, um, they see that there's a lot of talent in order to do business. The flow of foreign direct investment, or FDI, to Africa steadily increased in the past decade, expanding some of the most desired sectors. FDI is beneficial to the host countries as it helps to enhance firm productivity, integrate domestic firms into global markets, and grow the host country's GDP. FDIs like oil and mineral billionaire and philanthropist Frank Timmis bring changes to any country. Before Frank Timmis and his African minerals um, actually get to Sierra Leone, we, we were coming out of the war. As we all know, we have a brutal war in Sierra Leone. And then we're coming out of the war. Our economy was shattered. Unemployment was very high then. And then we, we, we had Frank Timmis, who came in with his African minerals investments, um, of which actually helped to turn around a lot of things in the country. So, because Mr. Timmis invested a lot au Sénégal. Et sur l'ensemble des projets qu'il a investi, il a aidé l'emploi, il a aidé l'exportation et la rentrée de devises. Aujourd'hui, c'est un honneur et un plaisir de travailler encore avec M. Timis. Et dans ce projet agricole, M. Timis est en train d'investir. M. Timis a déjà investi beaucoup au Sénégal, dans d'autres domaines industriels. Il a, investi, il, a, il a fait engager beaucoup d'emplois et a beaucoup participé pour l'économie du pays. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes encore enchantés de travailler avec lui compte tenu des résultats qu'il a vu dans ce pays. Ce projet qu'il est en train de financer, c'est un projet qui va prendre beaucoup d'emplois et qui va encourager l'élevage et l'agriculture. FDIs like these create a ripple effect, a trickle-down economy to help improve income equality, stimulate economic growth, but also improve livelihoods. Frank Metis, after I got a trigger, then it's going to be a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit أنا مرتنا ولي 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 فرق ميتس يجانا ما وما يكلنا تمرك على كل بلاري يجانا غش غط ديزم وما لسنا غير نتم خطر ورنا لي مقدر ولا يجانا يوانا لي مقدر ولا كتة فانقة وما تقرأ وانا بالية دي من الكنز ما يجانا قد موان ترى وانا بتلد تنتريش تسالته the feeling is that I'm going to to the house. I'm going to go 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 I uh, we uh, Africa should need the people who will take risk. Exploration is a risk a business. It's a risky business, and uh, the, the you know the international companies most of the time, the more they become big, less they will they will take those kind of risk. 
I look around Africa and on the, like, for example in the north, the first discovery that happened was taken was uh, was uh, was done by by risky people like they come in and just give uh, uh, you know experienced people and take the, the, the risk and then they found out. He, he collaborated many times with street chains. I remember. Um, in terms of Africa Minerals working with street child also to, to support them in so many other charitable organi- um, activities under the African Minerals Company then. But personally, from Frank Timmy's point, he was so passionate in supporting young people in Africa. He was so passionate in supporting the community. So he helps develop a lot of um, um, and charitable venture across um, um, our operations area. And like I said, even into football, it developed help communities with football, scholarships, community centers, schools. There was so much then during the, the, the Africa mineral era that we will never forget. Well, I've been uh, involved on the African continent, specifically on uh, the uh, subcontinent in West Africa for uh, about 20 years. And uh, I have built uh, a very large project in uh, uh, mining and oil and gas, multi-billion dollar projects. Uh, For example, in Sierra Leone, uh, we have built a multi-billion dollar project, probably uh, the largest ever built in the subcontinent, uh, mining, uh, 25 million ton operation of a 300 kilometer of railway and a very large port. And we have uh, employed uh, direct and indirect over 30,000 people. Uh, the project was built on about, or just over three years, was a record on the mining history, uh, considering that Sierra Leone just came out of a 20 year old war. Uh, we didn't have uh, skilled people. Uh, we had to train substantial numbers of people uh, related to skills across the project. My vision was always to train the local people and give them the opportunity to be trained uh, and uh, promote them to management level and actually empower them to, to, to run projects and to uh, maintain projects and to become a self-driven uh, and responsible uh, people because the resources are belong to them. According to the World Bank and the IFC reports in 2011 and 12, the GDP of the country was 5% when it started. And uh, during the operations, the GDP of the country went to 52%, so 10 times fold on the GDP of the country, according to the World Bank report. Frank Timmis brought a lot of eyes towards his investment strategies in Africa. There is a call made from the United Nations to foreign direct investors to focus their time, energy and much needed investment to cover one of the sustainable development goals. And on the top is goal two, zero hunger. The world's population is expected to rise to 9.6 billion by 2050, resulting in a considerable demand for food and sources of protein. African Agriculture Inc. is one such company that is taking up the call to furthering development in agriculture and aquaculture and the main country of investment, Senegal. The two major issues going forward of uh, generations for our children, grandchildren, and future generations will be food security and environment. These are coupled together, in my view. At African Agriculture, building a company dedicated to food security and sustainability that utilizes Africa's air, soil, and coastline to feed, sustain, and offset the planet. Africa holds 60% of the world's remaining arable land. I know West Africa very well, operate in seven countries. 
So in the last uh, few years, I said, well, uh, I think it's time to change. I would like to build one of the largest uh, farming and environment uh, corporation on the African continent. Considering that Africa has probably about 60% of the arable land globally, yeah. So I have bought a farm uh, from an Italian group in 2018. I have invested a substantial amount of money uh, on the farm so far. And the strategy is, is to, uh, uh, to grow uh, requirements of protein for livestock feed for the region, which if you look at the numbers is over 100 million cattle on the regions to feed, also for export probably to Middle East and uh, in other places where it's required. We're looking two types of uh, alfalfa, we're looking a uh, type of alfalfa with very high quality for feeding uh, livestock and probably a separate uh, for biomass, considering that the environment and the regulation are getting stricter and stricter today. We are in the process of, uh, of uh, applying and getting uh, over 1 million hectares uh, of uh, high quality land, high quality water, high quality weather. Is a part of it will be for alpha alpha, but the biggest, largest part is going to be for environment. The environment, I believe, it is a key factor going forward. Part and parcel for projects of this magnitude to be successful is sustainable partnerships. African Agriculture Inc. found a suitable partner at the south end of the United States of America, Louisiana State University Ag Center. At the moment, we are in a partnership with the United States government, which is fantastic. Most powerful country in the planet. Uh, we are in a joint venture also with uh, one of the most prestigious university from the uh, United States related to agriculture. They got over 2,000 uh, scientists related to all factors, related to agriculture, related to environment, uh, related to training. This is going to be a unique partnership um, because uh, our current international partnerships are with other universities, and this is going to be the first one um, with more of a private company. And so I think there are different um, opportunities that we're going to have to branch out with that. Um, but I think the ability to create kind of from the ground up with a private entity, a training program, an educational program, outreach, um, and then to also establish uh, some research opportunities to look at how some of our agronomic resources, um, genetic resources perform um, in the environment in Senegal um, is, is going to be good. And so in five years, what I'd like to see is really um, a, a true collaborative program um, with the sharing of knowledge um, and, and to perform as the university does to fulfill our mission um, to, to do education and outreach um, and to support economic development. Um, and I'd, I'd like to see connections made that could lead to reciprocal trade and different opportunities um, beyond uh, just what the university can do. Je m'appelle Fatima Taka. Je gère le département RSE, responsabilité sociétale d'entreprise relations extérieures des fermes de la Teranga. Euh, je suis là depuis 2014. Euh, donc, où le projet se situe dans une réserve, donc dans une réserve qui a impacté deux collectivités locales. Donc, la première collectivité locale, c'est la commune de Ron et la deuxième, c'est la commune de Nid. Et donc, où, à l'intérieur du projet, donc, il y a plusieurs villages qui se, qui se situent donc, dans les deux collectivités locales qui sont impactées. Et présentement, donc, les autorités politiques, c'est-à-dire les, les élus locaux, les maires et autres, les populations, les villageois, les, la jeunesse, tout le monde attend que le redémarrage du projet donc, pour y trouver leurs bénéfices. Every time I visit Africa, you're just absolutely astounded by the opportunities there that have not been tapped into. And I think LSU could really help with that. We have a lot, I mean, we have a very long tradition of sugarcane cultivation and processing research. 
that we can really help out enormously with. Um, and also alfalfa, which is a very important fiber crop, particularly for animal food. We have, a, we can exchange a lot of the research there. Alfalfa represents the world's highest source concentration of vegetation-based protein. Alfalfa gives us a great start. This will give us a high turnover, highly leverageable, extremely high margin cash flow source that will enable us to execute on our corporate projects. Alfalfa, in addition to being a very high protein source for dairy cattle and for livestock, which are abundant in the Echo West region, also has a very high caloric value in terms of biomass. Foreign direct investments, partnerships, dedication, and goals, ingredients for a successful recipe. All that is missing now is the next step, planning for the future. We want to be the first, the most successful, prestigious, and the largest. My strategy is to build something which no one has done before. Protein for animals, biomass for green fuel, and naturally the biggest, the biggest uh, 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 strategical investment will be related to uh, uh, protecting the dissertation on the African corridor. We will start in West Africa, but we are also intending and focusing to move to East Africa, naturally. La vision de African agriculture dans les cinq ans, c'est de créer à plus de 5000 emplois, emblaver plus de 20 000 hectares de terre et développer l'exportation de Alpha Alpha en dehors des autres pays. Donc, la vision, notre vision, c'est d'aider l'agriculture, d'aider, encourager l'emploi des jeunes. Global awareness for the environment is increasing, alongside Africa's potential role. COP26 in Glasgow came to a close with the goal of uniting the world against climate change. Climate change continues to hit African countries the hardest, though this continent is the least responsible for creating it. There is a necessity for a transfer of technologies, know-how, capital resources, and capacity building which developed nations can provide to Africa. The damage done to the developed world reaches Africa in the form of heat stress, drought, hurricanes, coastal changes, erosion, and rising sea levels. Yet even the United States Colorado River has declared the first ever water shortage with the federal state of emergency and will slow down food supplies and ultimately economic growth. Providing resources directly to 40 million Americans and being depleted 80% by virtue of agriculture, accounting for over 53% of the world's alfalfa exports, the limitation of water in the United States contrasts with our abundance of water on the African continent and in Senegal specifically. But instead of asking what Africa will get from this devastation, let's ask what Africa can contribute. Companies like African Agriculture Inc. utilizing precision technology and creating jobs simultaneously have taken on the mission to invest in the continent and solve the world's necessity for food and protein security for the coming century in harmony with clean energy sources via biofuels and for the Great Green Wall of Africa initiative for emissions offset. C'est un pays qui a un potentiel euh, euh, d'eau de surface et de sous-sol très important. Une récente étude faite par euh, un cabinet commis par euh, le compact MCC des États-Unis vient de révéler que dans la région juste derrière Niamey, nous avons euh, des réserves d'eau de 600 milliards de mètres cubes avec une capacité de reproduction annuelle de 2 milliards de mètres cubes. Et vous avez des, des nappes où on peut faire de l'irrigation, 
sur une profondeur variant de 5 mètres à 40 mètres. C'est un des aquifères les plus importants comme ça, qui est tout proche de la ville de Niamey. Ce sont à peu près 2 millions d'hectares qui vont euh, susceptibles de faire l'objet d'une euh, production agricole euh, euh, irriguée. Dans mon programme, je compte mettre un accent particulier sur la promotion des chaînes de valeur dans le domaine de l'agriculture. Our complex here is fully sustainable, with solar-based power generation, fish and aquaculture embedded in all over our water channels on the farm, which, are, which have the ability to create our own biofertilizer to enhance our crop yields, as well as our ability to participate in the Great Green Wall project, which is a very exciting reforestation program to prevent the desertification of the Sahara Desert. In Glasgow, they highlighted that the OECD countries represent over 99% of all of the global ESG projects. We look forward to changing that discrepancy as it relates to the emerging markets. If every person on this planet will plant one tree a year, which is not a big ask, I believe that our planet today will be a lot better planet related to environment.